regreso aquí en Auto 060, una edición especial hablando de autos eléctricos, autos híbridos, autos plug-in híbridos. Este, and we're talking here with Lindsay Brooks, Senior Editor of Automotive Engineer. So, Lindsay, we were talking about the Tesla S model, which they are calling the car of the future. But that car is already on the street. I mean, you basically can order one now, and I start driving it pretty soon, I guess, right? So, that's right. Um, What's going to be the future? Because we were talking about the development of the batteries, how the Prius started like in 97, then it came the Bolt, then it came the Leaf, the Spark EV, Mitsubishi also has one, Honda has one. So what are we going to see, let's say, in 10 years, which uh, seems for some other industry a lot of time, but now the things are developing in the auto industry, going amazing, amazingly fast. When you think about five years ago, Uh, to, to today, it's the, the changes that we have seen are amazing. So in 10 years, I can't imagine what we're going to see. Well, exactly right. I mean, 10 years in automotive development time is basically two vehicle cycles. Yeah. So, uh, and, and the current one is already in the can. It's already done. So really, really we're looking at one and a half, maybe more vehicle cycles. Um, the new CAFE regulations uh, in the U.S., which are calling for by 2025 for each manufacturer to have a fleet fuel efficiency average of about 55 miles per gallon. And there's similar regulations in Europe and similar regulations in Asia. These regulations, Javier, are going to drive a lot of electrification in our vehicles, our cars and our trucks as well. These new regulations give credit for what they call high technology credits, which are um, our hybridization, our electrification, Basic systems like stop-start that shut the engine off instead of idling and then start it upright again, um, or systems that recapture braking energy, which most hybrids have, for solar panels in the roof. Mm -hmm. And all of these are, are, are kind of related to the electrified vehicle technologies. Uh, we're going to see more development of batteries. The battery range and energy storage will be better. Electric motor systems will be better. These, these cars will have kind of intelligence to them. So they'll know when to uh, they'll know when to bring the battery on when you're driving a hybrid, and then take the battery off depending on uh, the road, because they'll be taking GPS signals, they'll be taking Google Earth symbols yeah. uh, signals. They'll they'll know the topography, so they'll be able to switch from combustion engine to to battery and back again really, really seamlessly. The thing is, is even though we have these regulations, as you know very well. Uh, Conventional vehicle technology is not standing still. No. And there's an increasing number of vehicles out there that get 35, 40, and even more miles yeah, per gallon. The new diesels are amazing. Yeah, that, that aren't hybrids. So, so hybridization and electrification have forced conventional vehicles to get better. Conventional vehicles getting better are forcing more emphasis on, you know, improving hybrid and electric vehicles. And like I said earlier, we're going to have petroleum Uh, for a long, long time. Uh, governments want to wean us off of petroleum and, have, and use less of it, but it doesn't mean it's going to go away. So you, in 10 years, you'll still be able to, to buy a conventional engine car with no hybridization. But, but the larger the vehicle, I think you're going to have a stop-start system. You're going to have maybe a small battery that captures some braking energy and then can reuse it again. And you're going to have full hybrids like Prius, like Volt, Uh, like other cars that are coming on, right now there's over 40 nameplates worldwide that's vehicle models that are either hybrid or electric. And every year over 10 or a dozen are coming into the marketplace. So which means, space which, is exploding. Yeah, which means that the infrastructure has to adapt to that and, 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 and expand by a lot very quickly. That, that, that's right. And, and like you alluded to, I mean, that's the other element of this is the auto industry can develop the vehicles, but... The uh, re regional governments, local governments, cities, states, regions, the electric power companies, they've all got to come to the table in this too. And just like our early examples of uh, traveling across the U.S. back in the teens yeah. of the last century trying to find a gas station, to make EVs work, to make battery EVs work, certainly you want to be able to charge them at home at night, but you also want to be able to drive to the Starbucks or drive to dinner or drive to Las Vegas and have stations along the way where you can stop and quick charge these vehicles. Now, quick charging is a 400 to 500 volt 
charging system, very high voltage, uh, and it will give your car, you pull in for a half hour, and it might bump the battery up by 30, 40%. Like, like we do like with that. your cell phones in the airport, right? <laughs> well, yeah, it, exactly right. So what you're talking about, you're absolutely right, is we need to kind of rewire the world for yeah. electrified vehicles. And, you know, the industry already knows how to make the cars, but it's finding places to charge them and also charge them at, at times like during the night where you're not a burden to the charging system when the electricity is cheaper to charge at night. Yeah. So, you know, these are big questions, and, uh, you know, governments are working in this, the power utilities are working this, and the automakers are working. They're all working together in this in this realm, but I got to tell you, if you love uh, gasoline burning traditional performance cars, uh, AMG Mercedes, Z01 Camaro, yeah. ZR1 Corvettes, these cars aren't going away. Don't so, worry about that. So this uh, uh, this reminds me of some uh, conversation I had a few year, a couple of years ago, uh, with uh, some Rolls Royce executives when they came out with a 102 EX electric uh, prototype for the Phantom, and they said it had a range of 100 miles. And they will say, yes, but uh, after that, most of our clients, when they travel 100 miles, they go by helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, the future, you know, you ask the question of 10 years, 15 yeah. years, 20 years down the line. The future is going to be a combination of a lot of different modes of transportation and a lot of different fuels. We'll have compressed gases. We'll have liquefied petroleum. We'll have regular old fossil fuels. And we'll have electricity. Excellent. So we're talking again with Lindsay Brooks. Uh, senior editor of Automotive Engineer, and uh, before we go away, we have a couple more minutes left. Believe it or not, it's been an hour, but it's going really, really fast. Uh, can you please remind us again of the website where can people look for more the, of this fascinating information that you have uh, shared with us today in the show? Well, absolutely. Uh, my magazine, again, is called Automotive Engineering International, and it's the flagship magazine of the Society for Automotive Engineers. And whether you're an SAE member or not, uh, you can you can read more about uh, what we're doing here at aei-online.org, dot O-R-G, aei-online.org. Yeah, we're going to post it also on our Facebook page uh, where we uh, do every week with, uh, with our show, so uh, it will be a quick... Uh find for our audience. So Lindsay, the next time we're, we go on a road trip, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll drive it a Ferrari or like a Porsche or something like that, not an electric car, what do you think? Well, well but you know, Javier, every one of those companies, even the little niche uh, boutique high performance makers, I mean, Ferrari has played around with yeah, hybrids, I heard that. Uh, Porsche, Porsche has the Spider, you know, they've got a racing yeah, car. Yeah, 918 Spider, yeah. 918 Spider. I mean, everybody is working on electrified cars in some dimension. So, uh, and literally everybody, big companies and little companies. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time, Lindsay Brooks, as Senior Editor of Automotive Engineer. And I really hope that not only I can have you at the, as a guest here on the show in the future, but also have the luck of see, sitting with you at uh, some of the dinners that we go on these events on the road again uh, sometime in the future. How are you? I always look forward to talking to you, running into you on, on our travels across the auto industry, and I'm always happy to talk to you. Thank you very much again, Lindsay. Thank you, sir. Pues ahí tienen una, una show especial, la hora completa la hemos dedicado a examinar eh, la historia de los autos híbridos eléctricos desde que empezaron con Henry Ford y Ferdinand Porsche hasta lo que, ha, lo que tenemos hoy en día con los Prius, con el Volt, con el Leaf, con el nuevo Tesla S que como les decía Lindsay es el auto del futuro, el Model S de Tesla y lo que veremos en 10, 15 años y como nos pronosticaba él los autos con motor de gasolina no van a desaparecer por lo menos en nuestro ciclo de vida van a seguir ahí así que ahí tienen toda esta información espero que hayan disfrutado de este show especial de Auto 060 yo soy Javier Mota recuerden que nos pueden seguir en facebook.com Cristina Radio a mí en personal me pueden seguir en, en Twitter arroba Javier Mota y nos vemos en la próxima edición de Auto 060 donde vamos a estar hablando con los expertos de la industria esto es Autos 060 y como os digo siempre no quiten la vista de la carretera y mantengan los oídos en Autos 060